Hey guys, now that the Mage Tower is back through Legion Time Walking, there's been a lot of interest in Time Walking and how to gear up for these new old challenges. So I thought I'd make a quick guide on how to optimize your gear and your time spent farming for it before the Mage Tower comes back. In case you're not already aware, the Time Walking Mage Tower works quite differently from regular Time Walking dungeons and raids. Borrowed power systems from previous and current expansions don't work. That means no Covenants, no Soulbinds, no Legion or Shadowlands Legendaries, no Azerite gear, no Essences, and no Legendary Cloaks, to name a few. On one hand, this is great, since you don't have to go back and farm those things like you would for normal Time Walking content. But there's still a way to get gear and enhance it that'll help you a lot more in the Mage Tower than your regular Shadowlands set will. What's gonna tip the scales in your favor is this. First, there's Legacy Enchants and Enhancements. That's stuff like the Crusader Enchant for weapons, which, even after being nerfed, is seriously strong. There are Leg Armors and Spell Threads, Wizard Oils, Pandaria Shoulder Inscriptions, and more. But there's a catch. These enchants can only be applied if the item you're enchanting has an item of level 50 or lower in its natural state. So that means we're looking for item level 50 gear. Sockets and gems matter too. Recently they nerfed the overpowered strength and intellect gems from BC Heroic Dungeons, which is nothing new for agility users whose versions of these gems were already crap, but you get the idea. And you can still cut primary stat gems from Queen's Garnet if you're feeling spendy, or Crimson Spinel if you don't have a ton of time or gold to burn through. Now, before Legion Time Walking, I would have recommended getting gear with lots of sockets from places like Throne of Thunder and Siege of Ogrimmar, because the item level ceiling for Time Walking was 35 for BC and Wrath, and 40 for Kata and Mop. Since the Mage Tower has an item level ceiling of 50 though, and because gear gets scaled down but not up, most of that socketed Pandaria raid gear isn't optimal, at least not for the Mage Tower. On one hand, you can try your luck. Mythic Siege of Ogrimmar drops item level 45 gear, and if you're lucky, it might Warforge to level 47. Unless you're trying to min-max to the extreme, a few lucky drops that are Mythic and Warforged can make you fairly solid, but here's a comparison just so you know what you're missing out on. And now we come to the solution. Chromie time. Be warned, you're gonna need a second person for this, or at least a second account. But hear me out, it's actually a lot simpler than some of the crap we put ourselves through for our original time walking sets. For the character that needs the time walking gear, I'm just gonna assume you're already max level. There's nothing special you have to do, and you're ready to walk into the dungeons you need loot from. But your second character needs to be specifically level 45. Not lower, not higher. Here's why. In case you don't already know, the beginning of Shadowlands brought with it the option to visit our embassy in Stormwind or Orgrimmar and enter Chromie Time. That's where you get to pick any expansion, vanilla through BFA, and then you can level all the way to 50 through its dungeons and zones. Once you choose, it points you in the direction of the leveling zones and dungeons from that expansion, all of it scaling with your level, but it also applies this level scaling to all of the expansions you didn't choose so you can hop freely between expansions without revisiting Chromie every time. Why does that matter? Because at level 45, loot from Burning Crusade Dungeons, if you have Chromie time active, drops at item level 50, which is the exact item level we're aiming for. Any higher and you won't be able to use Legacy Enchants on it. Before I forget, make sure you turn off experience gain for your level 45 character. You can do this by talking to Besten in Stormwind Keep for Alliance, or Slats in Hall of the Brave for Horde. You really just want to run Burning Crusade normal dungeons with your max level character and your level 45 character, together. Wowhead has an article that lists all of the socketed gear from these places, which I'll link in the description, but keep in mind that not all of the gear has the same stat budget even after scaling. More on that in a minute. Here's what you do. Two characters walk into a Burning Crusade dungeon. One's your main, the one who needs time walking gear, and the other is the level 45 character who has Chromie time active. Legacy loot mode automatically activates since you've got a max level character with you, which means each boss drops two pieces total. The gear your level 60 gets doesn't matter. It drops at the original low level since you can't be in Chromie time past 50. That gear is basically useless. But your level 45 character will get drops at item level 50 which you can then trade to your main. For my warrior, I ran Magister's Terrace a few times and then came out with these pieces. Just to be clear, the level 45 character doesn't have to be any specific class or armor type, 
Legacy loot mode is not personal loot, so a warrior can get drops that are cloth, leather, mail, you name it. That means the level 45 you're using to get the gear for your main can be absolutely anything. So that's nice. Once you figure out the pieces you want, it's that simple. Just keep running these normal BC dungeons until your level 45 gets the gear you want, and then just trade them to your main. But remember what I said, not all of this gear has the same stat budget. You want to make sure you're farming for the right chest piece, or for whichever piece you're after. Here's how we're going to figure that out. You see these two pieces? Strength and stamina are the same. They both have three sockets, but wait. One has 15 crit and 9 haste, for a total budget of 24 of your secondary stats. And the other one just has 10 crit and nothing else. Same item level, same chromie time, massively different stat budgets. And it's not always the secondary stats. I noticed that some of the weapons with sockets actually have different amounts of primary stats too. Don't ask why it's like that, just make sure you're farming the best piece for each slot. And don't forget to compare the socket bonuses. Usually it's not that big of a deal, but if the two pieces you're looking for have the same stat budget, sometimes the bonus can help you pick which one you actually want. That's basically all I have to say about using Chromie Time to gear up for the Mage Tower. They could end up changing and nerfing more things before Mage Tower opens again, but for now, this is the way to improve your odds, you know, without putting in actual work. Just so it's clear, your time walking gear and borrowed power from before still works for regular time walking dungeons and raids, but I could definitely see some of these Chromie Time pieces being suitable, maybe even better for that. Check out the second link in the description if you want to know how to start a regular time walking set for regular time walking dungeons and raids. Everything there is still relevant to that side of things, just not for the Mage Tower. Just a few worthwhile mentions before I end this out. Uh, Dragon Spine Trophy, it's a strength agility trinket, has a massive and frequent haste proc. That's why it's on top of so many people's lists when it comes to gearing for time walking. It's definitely worth trying for. There's also a few rare world drops that scale with Chromie Time. If you get one of these and don't plan to use it, the procs are insanely good, and you can probably make a ton of gold selling them. If you post on the forums or on that item's wowhead page, I'm sure you'll find somebody interested. Oh yeah, and uh, keep your stoppable forces. They're these gray maces that drop in a lot of Burning Crusade content. I've had luck selling them for anywhere from 500 to 10,000 gold each. They're part of the currency for the Aetherworm pets in Oribos. And if you're farming BC dungeons, you're going to end up with a bunch of them. As always, thanks for watching, and good luck on your challenge!